Unit 5. Joseph in Egypt. Famine, family, forsaken, and faithfulness. All these things are going to come to play uh, as we see in the life of Joseph. So we talked about uh, important uh, motifs to watch for in Genesis. And one of the ones that we haven't talked about yet, there's one more, and that's this one, that there's, there's a very important role uh, that famine and Egypt play in the lives of the patriarchs, patriarchs being Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph, right? So we see that in Genesis 15, when, when Abram first comes into Canaan, there is a famine there, and he goes down to Egypt because of that. There's another famine in Genesis 26, but Isaac is specifically told not to go to Egypt. And then now there is a severe famine in Genesis uh, 41 through 47. This is all the, the backdrop of the account of Joseph. And now Joseph is uh, taken to Egypt against his will. And then we're going to see that Jacob and his sons also end up going to Egypt. And it becomes an extraordinarily important uh, part of God's, of God's plan. So, so what happens here? So from Jacob to Joseph, we, we, talk, um, we, we talked about last time. So, so Jacob had swindled Esau and he left and went up to Haran. And so we see in Genesis 33 and 34, many years later, that Jacob is both reconciled with Esau, and then we see this event with Jacob's sons and this girl named Dinah, where they take revenge on on Shechem. Rachel dies, giving birth to the, their twelfth son, whether their their second son, but Joseph's twelfth uh, son, Benjamin, and later his father Isaac dies, and Jacob's sons uh, bury him. So we have the we have that, then we have the genealogy of Esau, and then we start to see the same thing in Joseph's family that he had with his mom and his dad. Remember that Rebecca was shows favoritism toward Jacob, and now we see Jacob showing favoritism toward Joseph, the second youngest of his son, right? Because we read about that he he loved him the most. It says in Genesis thirty-seven three, and he gave him this, you know, the the famous uh, coat of many colors. But so there was favoritism in his previous generation and it, and it and it followed him down into it, into his own generation with his own sons and it causes a bunch of problems but another important thing that happens is that Joseph receives a dream and the dream they don't his brothers don't like it because basically Joseph says hey I had a dream and all of you are bowing down to me basically and it says they hated him even more in fact so now he's, he's, he's kind of the daddy's boy. He's the favorite of the family from the father. So they don't like him for that. And now he has this dream and they don't like him even more for that. And so they want to kill him, but they're not going to get anything for that. So they say, well, what if we, what if we just sell him? And so that's what happens to Joseph. They take him and they sell him to Midianite traders and Joseph gets shipped off to Egypt. And then they lie to Jacob about it. They, they go back and they tell him that he's been killed and they put fake blood, or not fake blood, but they put animals' blood all over his coat. And Jacob, of course, thinks his precious son is gone and dead, and he, and he weeps. And if we, we look at, uh, at a map here, we talked about Hebron, that's actually where they were. Uh, to, to sell Joseph, they took him up to this town uh, called Dothan, and that was where he was picked up by the Midianite traders and taken uh, down through Samaria and through all these places, a lot of these names aren't relevant yet, but um, just for reference, and he's taken down into Egypt. And so what happens there? Well, he's, he's in uh, the house of a guy named Potiphar, and he's a slave, and Potiphar's wife uh, thinks Joseph is pretty impressive. And so he, she kind of makes some advances toward him, and he refuses that. Because of that, he's imprisoned, he's thrown in prison. But all the while he has God's favor, and we see this in, in Genesis chapter 40, right? He becomes an interpreter of dreams. He interprets people's dreams down there in prison, and he has so much favor that he's actually given leadership inside the prison. So Joseph is, a, is, is always walking in God's favor, but his circumstances so far have been horrible. He's been, he's been betrayed, he's been shipped off out of his homeland, and now he's in prison. And so it seems like the more he follows God, the worse things become. But God is using this, and we see this. And so now Pharaoh actually has a dream. So the Pharaoh at the time has this dream, and he says, what does it mean? And the people in his court can't interpret it, but they remember, hey, there was this guy down in prison that could interpret dreams. Let's see if he could do it. So they bring him before Pharaoh. Joseph interprets it, and, and in almost in one day, Joseph goes from being forgotten in prison to the second most powerful person in the world at that time. He's second in command to Pharaoh, and we see this in chapter 41. And this is, of course, the, the sovereignty of God, because what happens next is, uh, is going to be so important, because Pharaoh then puts Joseph 
in charge of gathering food. See, Joseph, his dream said, you're going to have seven years of plenty, and you're, then you're going to have seven years of famine following that, Pharaoh, so you better prepare. And so he says, okay, you're in charge, get on it. And so now Joseph is in charge of this, of this process of gathering food in, into Pharaoh's storehouses for seven years. And we see that in Genesis 37. But then the story continues because in Genesis 41, it says this, then the seven years of plenty, which were in the land of Egypt, had ended. And the seven years of famine began to come, as Joseph had said. The famine was in all the lands, but in all but in all the land of Egypt, there was what? There was bread, because God had obviously worked and they had prepared. And so now we see that the famine was all over the face of the earth, and Joseph opened the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became severe in the land of Egypt. So all the countries came to Joseph to buy grain because the famine was in the land, right? It mentions this a lot. So what's the point? Well, when Jacob, his dad, saw that there was grain, remember Jacob thinks Joseph has been dead for years. And now they're suffering from the famine too. This is Genesis 42, 1. He says to his sons, why are you looking at each other? I have heard that there's grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy us some so that we may live and not die. And now we see this amazing reunion with Joseph and his family because Joseph's brothers, they come to Egypt to buy grain, but Benjamin stays back with Jacob. He says, you, we, it would kill me. I lost Joseph. I can't lose Benjamin. So he stays back. And of course, Joseph is in charge of this whole operation and he recognizes his brothers, but they don't recognize him. And, he's, and so he wanting to see all of his brothers, he, he basically demands that Benjamin come without revealing his identity. And he actually even throws his brothers in prison. They think he's this harsh guy. Um, and, and we're going to see this awesome reunion come because they go and gra- get Benjamin. They bring some gifts back to Joseph. They don't know who he is yet in chapter 43. And in chapter 44, we see that he brings them all into his house. And Joseph, basically, there's a number of times where he just can't handle it anymore because he 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 wants to, to reconcile with his brothers. And he finally does in, in Genesis 45. He says, I am Joseph who you sold. Um, <clears throat> you know, And uh, from there, Pharaoh, of course, promises the best of the goods to Joseph's family. And then he says, I, is my father still alive? And so they go back, to, back to, uh, to Canaan to get Jacob and they bring him to Egypt in Genesis 46. And so of course, Jacob and his, uh, and his son Joseph reunite um, and, all, and all of the people that, that Jacob alone doesn't come back, like all the children of his, of his household come with him. This giant mob comes to Egypt. They reunite with Joseph, and they go to this place called Goshen. And that's where um, we see later Jacob, he gives each son a specific blessing, and later each son becomes the 12 tribes of Israel. And so what's amazing is that this place, Egypt, was just another way that God was faithful to the Abrahamic covenant. And so in our next unit, in uh, unit six, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at the role of Egypt in the sovereign care of God.